Aloha and welcome. My name is John Kanching, and I'm bringing you uh, another episode of Hospitality Hawaii, a, a 30 minute insight into what's been going on with our industry. Uh, and usually in the past, I've done it every two weeks, but take a little hiatus. And I think the last show was somewhere, maybe at the early part of summer. Um, and I just thought that there was there was too much uh, verbiage and news going on about the industry. And the last thing I wanted to do was was regurgitate the same information that was that was already out in Civil Beat and the Star Advertiser and all the news channels and so forth. So, so it's been a few months. So now here we are nearing the end of the year, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to somewhat recap some of the things that have happened throughout the course of the year, and also talk a little bit about you know how different um, um, parts of the industry is looking at how 2022 might shape up so so let's 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 give it a whirl so here we are you know if you can if you can even think back on how january of 2021 was i mean for me personally being involved in the industry for as many years as i have been um, you know as, as i look back on what i can remember of the first quarter it just seemed to be you know, things were seeming to settle down. You know, 2020 was was obviously a very crazy year. There was a lot of angst and uh, panic, and um, you know, no one knew how how the impacts of COVID-19 was going to you know further change our lives as well as change the industry. But it seemed like we we got through that. You know, you know, um, governments across the country started to you know. Um, have a variety of different restrictions and different responses to uh, the, the pandemic situation. And I think we read every day in the news or definitely every week about the ongoing progress towards vaccines coming in. And, and so the end of 2020 and into early 2021 uh, held a lot of promise. The vaccines were now available to different groups and probably by the springtime, a, a good portion of those available in, in Hawaii could, got, could get vaccinated and a lot of them were. Um, so fast forward, you know, I, I do recall that when we came into spring, the Hawaii industry actually did very well. You know, the, the, there was a, a resurgence of visitors and partially because there was no one else, nowhere else they could go to. You know, a lot of the other states were either had uh, restrictions or were were you know in, imposing a lot of different mandates on visitors. And at that time, Hawaii had eased up a little bit. The Safe Travels Hawaii program had begun just around there. So so although there was confusion uh, about the regulations as they differed from county to county, it it ended up with a with a great result. So hotels were were very busy, businesses were thriving again, the ones that were open uh, and could open with the different restrictions in place. But spring break, right around that Easter Sunday before and after, you know, did, did very well. Uh, and then that trend somewhat continued. Uh, and then summer was literally fantastic. You know, there are hotel and industry companies and uh, partners that I've worked with that said that based on the experiences they had in the summer of 2021, they were some of the best summers that that different hotels have had. And, and if you somewhat reflect back on some of the uh, statistics that the Hawaii Tourism Authority um, reported, especially for neighbor island hotels, you know, the room rates in the Maui hotels were through the roof. I mean, um, high double digit increases from the same July of of 2020, and of course, even exceeding July of 19, which was the watershed year for the state. So summer, summer did great. Um, then the usual softness in September, October, and then in November, where although not bad, when you compare to 2019, of course, um, and, and it varied, like for example, um, November was down uh, let's see, November results haven't come in, but then September was down 31% in the number of visitors, but only down 15% in total expenditures. Um, October was down 31% in the total number of visitors and down 15.3% in, in spending. So although the number of visitors, um, uh, you know, is still pretty high, the deficit from 2019, 
because hotels in general have been able to keep their rates up um, to a respectable level that has uh, eased some of the drop in spending uh, or, or the ease of drop in, in revenue. Now, neighbor islands have actually benefited from it. You know, so all through this time period during the summer, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, their rate increases, even into the fall, while Oahu room rates have dropped, neighbor island room rates have actually continued to increase in the 15, 20, 30% increases over 2019, which is actually a, a pretty interesting statistic. But, you know, we don't know how November is going to turn out, but just anecdotally, from what I've been hearing, it, it seems like it's like October and September, where you've got, you know, generally middle, medium occupancies and, um, um, and during these shoulder periods, but then you have some, some spikes and peaks. Like there was a, definitely a spike over the Thanksgiving weekend and businesses were full. You, you know, you know it, it's, it's interesting how you can, you can somewhat have a, a gauge when you look at some of the, 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 the crowds that are at certain places. If you look at the crowds that are in front of Cheesecake Factory on, on Kalakaua Avenue, you look at the crowds that are actually queued up and around the corner at Marukame Udon in, on Kuyo Avenue. I, I know it sounds a little crazy, but, but you can actually kind of gauge that. And, and even the crowds that line up early in the morning in front of Kona Coffee purveyors on the backside of the international marketplace. Um, but so, so here we are, December was looking like it gonna, was gonna be pretty good, but then more news about the Omicron variant and some of the impact that that could have. A couple of days ago, Peter Ingram, the CEO of Hawaiian Airlines came out with a, in a press release and an article that was carried about how the, um, the different country governments and, and how quickly they acted with respect to um, imposing or reimposing some of the restrictions um, against the, the potential growth of the Omicron variant has um, put a little setback in Hawaiian Air's plans now. Now I believe they are still going to open up their, their flights to back to and from Australia, which is great because it had been somewhat suspended or minimized for quite a while. But this is definitely putting a a a, um, a a chink in what what everyone had thought that market would have produced, especially in the Japan market. You know, Japan is a big part of our success. They'll they'll continue to play a big part in the success of the overall uh, business to Hawaii, uh, but especially Waikiki. And it, at at one point, it had looked like that business was going to start coming back before the end of the year, especially over the Christmas and New Year's period. But now everyone's thinking that the, that business won't start coming back until March, April, May, and then hopefully, um, if things don't escalate on the Omicron variant, variant, then summer will begin to look like a little bit like the summers that we might have enjoyed in the past. So, um, a lot of changes. Um, I, I think I I would personally characterize 2021 as a. Um, as a year where nothing great actually happened, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there was, there was a lot of wait and see in the first quarter. There was a, a big boom in the in the springtime, a big boom in the summer, and, and and then not a whole lot in the fall. But I will so say though, for the Waikiki hotels and the a lot of the small businesses that are around that area, there's there's been a somewhat of a little silver lining over this last weekend and, and maybe for the next few weeks. Um, unfortunately, it comes as a result of a of what could be a very serious situation, or what is a serious situation, but and hopefully doesn't grow into something much larger, is the contamination that's occurring in the Red Hill area. So last week, uh, the Army and the Navy relocated a number of their uh, army base fa army based families um, um, into Waikiki hotels. There have been um, statistics that say anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 hotel rooms are being used and, and were secured at the last minute. And, and thankfully, it worked out that the hotels had, had availability that, that they could accommodate some of these families. Um, but here you have, here you have now uh, thousands of uh, relocated um, uh, military families in Waikiki, 
and are struggling to, to fit into a hotel room, some with pets, some with families, and, and not knowing what the situation is when they can actually get back to their home. For the hotels, though, and for the, the residents that, that are actually employees of the hotels and the shops and the businesses in and around Waikiki, it, it's been somewhat of a, a boon because, you know, now, you know, they, they can keep people working. They're not going to have that normal early part of December slowdown before the holidays. Um, so, so we'll see how that works out. And, and, and hopefully it works out to the benefit of everybody and, and they get everything fixed and, and these military families are able to get back to their homes uh, safely and, and within a few weeks. So, so now as we look at um, 2022, uh, a very, very interesting year. Um, so the Hawaii Tourism has recently issued a couple of RFPs for, for major contracts. And the first one would be a $22.5 million contract for the marketing and management of its uh, leisure market for the uh, U.S. market, not U.S. only, not including Canada or any of the other areas, specifically for the United States. And the other RFP that was issued out was a $4.5 million contract for the global marketing and management of the meetings, conventions, and incentive markets for the state of Hawaii. Now, both contracts are effective January 1st of 2022, and um, they are for four years with a one-year option, so a potential five-year span. Now, the incumbent for both contracts is the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau um, that um, I, I'm sure has also bid on that on that contract as well. So, so as we progress in the weeks and months ahead, it will be very interesting to see um, who the HTA selects to carry on the mission and the objectives set forth in the RFP. Now, one thing very different, uh, and and it will it'll it'll shape reshape the way Hawaii markets and manages its tourism um, business is the resident sentiment. So I'll speak to myself first as a resident and secondly as a industry professional. So as a resident, it was great to see Honolulu and Waikiki streets not crowded, uh, beaches clean, waters clean. And I know um, there have been a number of articles about that. Uh, Lee Cataluna uh, from Civil Beat wrote a, a great article about you know, oceans being clean and visitors um, not being around and, and general uh, uh, um, residents having more of a ownership and kind of regaining back their island, or islands, so to speak. Um, from an industry perspective, it was a da disaster. So you can imagine, you know, the industry barreling along 2019 and coming to pretty much a screeching halt um, in, in March of 2020 thousands and thousands of people out of work, although supplemented um, fairly well with unemployment and the, the various um, supplemental checks and the various supplemental weekly unemployment um, uh, stipends that they got. But, but now that's over. That's over and done with. And um, it's, you know, there are a lot of jobs open, hotels and businesses that have stayed open during that time period and all, all through the pandemic have found ways to survive. They found ways to survive with, with less staff. They've been able to um, optimize the existing um, team members to service guests. They've curtailed some of the guest services. Um, you know, I, I think most hotels that were open had, had um, restricted or limited um, um, housekeeping services in the hotel room. Some of them have brought daily maid service back. Others are still on demand. Some are every other day. There's a a whole variety of, of different guest services, limitations or, um, or restrictions that, that are still in place. But, um, you know, again, the Omicron variant is gonna play a, a very interesting part of, of our recovery in the business. Um, you know, the, the resident sentiment is up front and center in the Hawaii Tourism Authority's um, RFP. Um, it's not all about, you know, getting as many people in the uh, hotel beds and in the uh, airline seats and spending as much money as, as 
um, was the direction in past years. Um, the pandemic and the, um, the institution of these destination management action plans by the Hawaii Tourism Authority for every island county has created a, a very vibrant platform for the islands and the individual counties to, to have a say and have input in how they want to see the recovery of tourism. You know, the, word, the term that's used not just in Hawaii, but in many other destinations around the world is regenerative tourism. How do we create a more sustainable regenerative tourism model for our state where in essence, um, the destination is better um, than, it, than it was when the, when the visitors leave? How can we educate our vis visitors pre-arrival, during their search, as they're searching through what destination, what island, what hotels they want to stay at, uh, during their stay, how can, remind, how can we remind them, how can we work with all the major companies like hotels, airlines, retail merchants, transportation companies, how can we work with them uh, to help us educate those visitors to be more mindful as they're walking down the trails at Manoa Falls, as they're going up the Napali coastline at, at Hanakapiai Valley, um, as they're going up to Volcano National Park, as they're going through all the different waterfalls, hiking trails, and as they're driving through the neighborhoods, how can we educate them to be more mindful of our natural resources? Um, so, so that's the challenge ahead for the Hawaii Tourism Authority. It's a challenge ahead for all of our businesses. And it's, it's clearly a challenge to any of the organizations and entities that are uh, bidding on any one of the contracts, whether it's the leisure contract or the global meetings and conventions and incentive contract. So, so we shall see. Um, it'll it'll be it'll be very interesting. Um, you know, recently in, in 2021, there were a number of hotel openings or after major um, construction and renovation. The Turtle Bay reopened, the Hale Kalani reopened. And both hotels expected to see a, a flurry of visitors that would come in and enjoy their renovated facilities, but that wasn't the case. Um, um, you know, the uh, you know, getting back to the destination management action plan committees. You know, these committees are comprised of individuals and professionals from all walks of life. They are they come from a diverse range of experiences. A visitor industry included. Um, and it will be uh, both a challenge um, and a, um, um, a, a, a positive experience for, for the visit industry as they interact with the destination management committees to, to determine how each island, each county can work um, more effectively as, as they move to Hawaii um, in, in the future. So, so it's interesting. There, there, there's certainly going to be a, a, a lot of um, um, uh, change coming up in the future. We're looking forward to a, a, a lot of activity um, and, and, and a lot of um, news and information coming forth uh, about the progress of the Omicron variant. Um, and um, with that, you know, I will sign off. And uh, I look forward to bringing you more information and updates as we get them. Uh, I will not be having a bi-weekly show anymore, but it will be kind of every few months and, and I'll work with the Think Tech Hawaii people to, to provide an update. But until then, um, I wish everyone uh, uh, aloha, mahalo, ahui ho, have a very happy holidays uh, and Merry Christmas, aloha. Mm -hmm.